Jean Seberg, the girl from the Middle West, is now the elegant bachelor girl in Paris. This is the entrance to her apartment on the left bank of the River Seine. Hello, Jean. Hello, Charles. How are you? I'm very well. Nice to let you come and visit you. Thank you. I'm delighted, you know, because my family in Iowa, in Marshalltown, has no idea how I live in Paris. This way they have a chance to see. Well, we'll show them. Who's that with you? Your concierge? Yes, this is my concierge, Madame Jerry. Madame, what's the fun? She's helping me with bonjour, my bread madame. and shopping. Il vous dit bonjour. Bonjour, monsieur. <laughs> She's delighted mais to be bon on American non, television. Il sait qu'il pleut maintenant. Oui, il, il pleut. Oui. Non, 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 mais ça se voit, mais ça a une importance oui, quand même. Oui. She's delighted to be on American television. This is Allez. her first appearance. <laughs> I'm sure she's a very important part of your life. She too, is Jean. a very important part. Uh, you must know what a concierge does, but for people who haven't been to France, a concierge is as much a French institution, I think, as champagne or, or perfume. She's sort of a, a dormitory house mother who takes care of every building and all the people in it and all their little daily problems. Je dis, j'explique que vous êtes une institution nationale, le concierge. Ah oui. Oui. Well, <laughs> it's a great pleasure. Enchanté. Great pleasure to meet you, Madame Jerry. Il dit qu'il est ravi de vous connaître. Ah, enchanté, moi-même. Oui. Jean, <laughs> what does the inside of your apartment look like? I'll show you right now. Good. Merci beaucoup, Madame. Et puis, uh, à tout à l'heure, hein? À tout à l'heure. Au revoir. Au revoir, Au revoir Madame. Madame. Alors, je vais... This is my den, Charles, which gives just off the kitchen when you come into the house. It's a lovely room. Do you do all your own shopping, Jane, or does that wonderful concierge help you? No, I do most of it. She helps me, though, when I'm filming, because I'm not there all day, and so she does it then, or else I eat in the little bistro around here. But usually I do it on my own. What's that wonderful horse there? This is, uh, this is interesting. It's not really a piece of sculpture, but this is an 18th century horse made out of wood, and it's jointed, as you see. And there's a rider that goes with it who's also jointed. And it was for art students to learn how to design uh, different paintings and different forms of the human body and the animal body. Well, they're very handsome. And what's that picture behind you? This is a painting by a French painter who's 35 years old named Francois Arnal, and it's called uh, Drowning Woman. Very abstract. Uh, would you like to explain it to us? <laughs> I don't think I can. You know, first of all, because I, I really don't know whether you can explain abstract art or not. I think you, you have to look at it and like it for the color or like it for the movement or for, for what it does to your imagination and what you feel when you see it. Uh, but it's, you know, it's hard to explain. I certainly don't see a drowning woman in it, do you? <laughs> I'm not sure I do, but that's a good explanation of abstract painting. Do you collect a lot of things? Not really, you know. I have friends uh, who've given me gifts, and then I'm interested, and I certainly have a lot to learn because my education in all of this has begun fairly lately, but uh, I enjoy learning. This is interesting. This was given to me by a friend of mine uh, whose name is Cesar, and he's rather well known now as a sculptor. He gave this to me because he's movie struck, and I wrote him a letter from Hollywood saying, Dear Cesar, yesterday I saw Fred Astaire or or I met Gary Cooper last night, and he was so delighted he made me this. It looks like a hunk of nails, which is what my grandmother called it when she was here. <laughs> what do you call it? Hmm. I don't know. There's no name for it, actually. It looks a little bit like a, a rather uh, very long-necked horse that needs a shave or something. Jean, Marshalltown, Iowa is, uh, as they might say there, Paris is a long country mile away from Hollywood. Now, at the ripe old age of 21, how do you like ma making movies here and living here? I like it very much, you know. I like it, uh, first of all, because as I said, there are lots of things which, uh, because of my, my small town background, I haven't learned yet and I don't know yet. And here, besides being in contact with movie people and besides talking movies, movies, movies all day and all night after work and during work, uh, my friends, not particularly because I searched them out in that way, but because all the creative forms here are mixed, are writers and painters and poets and, and many things besides actors or directors. And so I feel as if I have, in a way, a, a, a more rounded life here. Mm-hmm. What are those bottles? These are uh, 
French milk bottles, old-fashioned French milk bottles. I think they're tinted silver now. Actually, you, you'll never get a Frenchman to drink a glass of milk anyway, but they're, they're rather pretty. This is another painting by Arnal. Uh-huh. And uh, this, I think you know because you, you admired it a while ago. This is a painting by Tamayo of Watermelon. It is a beauty. And this is a gift from a friend of mine, too. This is a Georgian fish. You know, they're silver fish, English, which wiggles its tail. Yes, they're very attractive. Jean, do you plan to come back to the United States and work? Oh, definitely. You know, uh, I'm an American, and I would hate to have anyone think I was an, an exile or an expatriate or anything else, because I, I feel totally that I'm an American, and, and uh, I happen to be here for, for various reasons. One, because I was married here, and uh, secondly, because for the time being, my work keeps me here. How old were you, Jean, when you got started in show business? I was 17, and uh, my high school dramatics teacher wrote Otto Preminger a letter to uh, ask him to hear me read for St. Joan, which, of course, had a lot of advanced publicity, as perhaps you know, and, of course, was a disaster, as I'm sure you know. Yes, I, I remember that. The reviews weren't so good, were they? No, they weren't good at all, and, and in a sense, they were quite justified in not being good, because I wasn't ready to do it, and uh, although I had all the determination and perhaps much too much confidence, which you can only have when you're, when you're rather ignorant and, and very young and naive. I suppose it's what you call chutzpah. <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, you know, I, I simply didn't have what it takes uh, as far as being a professional, as far as knowing the, the technique of my work to, to do it. I had to learn. And you can never, uh, as I've realized since then, force a new personality on any public. They have to uh, select you and all the publicity men and all the producers and all the talent of the best directors in the world is not going to uh, make the public accept you if they don't choose to on their own. And when they didn't accept you after that first picture, St. Joan, uh, you didn't take the reviews lying down, though, did you? You went to work. Well, I was very lucky because Preminger uh, continued to believe in me, and he put me in Bonjour Tristesse, in which uh, the reviews were considerably better, although still not everything that we would have hoped for. Well, they were a big improvement. And, that, and then, you, then you studied a lot, didn't you? Yes, I did. I, uh, first of all, I sort of crawled off into a corner and, and died <laughs> because this was, this was my whole life at the time and I wanted terribly for, for everything to be a big success and I wanted everyone to be proud of me and I wanted to justify everyone's faith in me. And then after that, I, uh, I did begin studying. I, I studied meme with uh, the teacher of Marcel Marceau and, and uh, Jean-Louis Barrault. I studied voice, I studied diction to lose my Iowa accent. Not that it's bad, but it limits me. Uh, and I studied most of all acting with a very wonderful man named Peyton Price in California. And I hope I've learned, certainly I'm much more relaxed in front of cameras anyway than I used to be. And then of course you went to England, didn't you, and made that wonderful picture with Peter Sellers, uh, The Mouse That Roared. Yes, that, it was a great deal of fun to do because Peter's a charming man and of course that was the picture which really made people begin to be interested in him and now, now things are going great guns for him. You've made a picture in French, haven't you? Yes, I have with my, with my, my American accent, but it was all right because I was playing in a New York Herald Tribune news girl who's studying in Paris and who gets into all kinds of trouble with a little French uh, small-time gangster. It's a picture called Breathless. It's opening in September in New York. And uh, here it was called Abu de Souf, which is out of breath. It's part of the new wave of filmmaking, as they call it here. What is the new wave? We hear a lot about it. Uh, how would you define it? Well, it's hard to define. You know, they resent very much being all grouped together. What it was, really, was a group of radical young uh, film critics who resented uh, the very conventional filmmaking and all the high budgets and this and that and decided to take cameras in their hands, uh, to take unknown actors or actors who uh, looked as if they had had no professional training, uh, to hide the cameras behind trees or in push carts or wherever they wished, uh, and shoot low budget movies which they thought had more life in them, a little bit like the Italian school when Rossellini and De Sica were making uh, the early re neorealist movies. Well, they've been a big success. Jane, what's the rest of your apartment like? I'll show you. You must come to my bedroom. I have some funny rugs. Fine. Let's see them. <laughs> you might know that any rugs made in France would have hearts on them. You know, they're supposed to be obsessed over here with l'amour, l'amour, l'amour. <laughs> they're very handsome. Jane, from the looks of your desk, uh, you haven't been answering your mail lately. 
You're bringing up a very sore spot with me, and I wish you wouldn't, you know. I'm a working girl. <laughs> Gives me a good excuse to, to promise my mother, though, that I will answer her letters. Jean, I suspect that all American girls from 21 up would like to know if you think that there's a difference between American men and French men. That's the inevitable question, and, and it's always asked. And I don't think that you can give any answer. I suppose you could say, in a sense, Frenchmen are more romantic, except when they're behind the wheels of their cars, when they become monsters. <laughs> but aside uh, from that, you know, I think you fall in love with a man for what he is as a human being, and not necessarily because of his nationality. Tell us, what is the difference in the way of life for a 21-year-old American girl in Paris and in the United States? Well, I think for a 21-year-old American girl in Paris who is doing films, my private life is probably much more my private life. When I leave the set at night, you know, my life is my own and I'm, I'm not bothered with other things. Whereas if I were living in Hollywood, I imagine that uh, my life would be much more uh, of public knowledge. You really do like Paris. Yes, I do. You know, some people are movie struck and I, I think I'm Paris struck. Where would you like to go from here in your travels? Well, uh, I'm learning to speak Italian, and I'd like to go to Italy if I could and, and perfect my Italian, so perhaps one day I could work in Italian. I'd like to go to Sweden because I'm a Swedish ancestry. And then in January and February, if all goes well, I plan to go to Iran and to India. It looks to me as though you have a pretty full agenda ahead of you, Jean. Thank you very much for letting us come and see you today. Thank you, Charles. Goodbye. Goodbye.